Good morning. Gustav Kirchhoff was a 19th century German physicist who expanded our understanding of electrical circuits, spectroscopy, and blackbody radiation. In fact, he coined the term blackbody radiation. Today we are learning about Kirchhoff's two rules for electrical circuits. They are very basic rules which are used to help understand electrical circuits. Let's start with what I find to be the hardest part for students about Kirchhoff's rules, namely how to spell Kirchhoff. So who can tell me how to spell Kirchhoff? Flippin' physics. Is Kirchhoff spelled with one F or two? How many H's? Are there two or three K's? <laughs> right. Two H's, two F's, one K. Sure. Let's start with Kirchhoff's loop rule, which states that the net electric potential difference around a closed loop equals zero. The loop rule is essentially conservation of electric potential energy in a circuit. Because electric potential difference equals change in electric potential energy per unit charge, the net change in electric potential energy in a closed loop then equals zero. Using a gravitational potential energy analogy, this is like saying, if you drop a mass off of a wall, then pick up the mass and return it to its original location, the change in gravitational potential energy of that mass equals zero. We know this to be true because the mass returns back to the same height as where it started. So the mass will have the same gravitational potential energy at the end as it did at the beginning, no matter where we place the horizontal zero line. Going back to electric potential energy, this means after a charge goes through one full closed loop around a circuit, the electric potential energy of the charge will return back to its original value. But because we are using electric potential, we really are talking about the electric potential energy per unit charge at each location. Let's say we have a 9 volt battery. That means we know the electric potential difference across the battery equals 9 volts. Bobby, as we go from the negative to the positive terminals of the battery, will the electric potential stay the same, go up, or go down? As we go from the negative to the positive terminal of the battery. Well, going from negative to positive means the electric potential will increase, so it goes up. Correct. Now, technically, we do not know the electric potential at any point, only the difference in the electric potential. However, it is customary to assume the minimum electric potential is zero. That means we are assuming the negative terminal of the battery is at zero volts, and the positive terminal of the battery is at positive nine volts. Billy, considering these are ideal wires, what is their resistance? Ideal wires have zero resistance. Correct. And considering the positive terminal of the battery is at positive nine volts, what then is the electric potential in the circuit in the upper left-hand corner? Well, because electric potential difference equals current times resistance and the wire has zero resistance, the change in electric potential is zero, so the electric potential should be the same there, so nine volts. Correct. And what about the upper right-hand corner? Still zero resistance in the wire, so still nine volts. Still correct. And what about the electric potential at the top of the resistor? Uh, again, zero resistance in the wire, so, so nine volts. Correct. Bo, well, please do the same thing with the bottom half of the circuit. Sure. We decided the negative terminal of the battery is at zero volts. The wire all the way from the battery to the resistor has zero resistance. So the electric potential does not change at all. So the electric potential is, is zero in all those places you mentioned before, both bottom corners and at the bottom of the resistor. Correct, Bo. This means the electric potential difference across the resistor also has a magnitude of nine volts. In other words, in this circuit, which has two circuit elements, the two elements, the battery and the resistor, both have the same magnitude electric potential difference. Yes, Billy. Bobby, what is the direction of the current in the resistor? Actually, we did this in a previous lesson. We, we know a positive charge in the circuit would be repelled from the positive terminal of the battery and attracted to the negative terminal of the battery. Therefore, the current in this circuit is clockwise. This means the current is down through the resistor. Correct, Bobby. Now, there is only one closed loop in our present circuit, so it might not seem obvious we need to do this. However, we need to define a loop direction. Often the loop direction is the same as the direction which goes through the battery from the negative terminal to the positive terminal of the battery. Therefore, we can choose our loop direction for this circuit as clockwise. 
This means as we go in the direction of the loop across the battery, the electric potential goes up because we go from the negative to the positive terminal of the battery. Therefore, when we sum the electric potential differences in our Kirchhoff's loop equation, the electric potential difference across the battery is positive. When we go in the direction of the loop across the resistor, as we illustrated a few minutes earlier, the electric potential goes down. Therefore, in our loop equation, the electric potential difference across the resistor is negative. We know the electric potential difference across the battery equals the electromotive force, or the EMF of the battery, and the electric potential difference across the resistor equals current times resistance. Therefore, we can determine the current in the circuit in terms of the EMF of the battery and the resistance of the resistor. Mr. P? Yes, Billy? The EMF and terminal voltage of our battery are the same because this is an ideal battery, yes? Correct. In our ideal battery, the electromotive force and terminal voltage are the same because ideal batteries have zero internal resistance. Now we can substitute EMF for the electric potential difference across the battery and current times resistance for the electric potential difference across the resistor. After we move current times resistance to the other side of the equation, we can solve for current and get the current in the circuit equals the EMF across the battery divided by the resistance of the resistor. Now, we could have chosen the direction of the loop as counterclockwise instead. Billy, how would these equations have worked out if we had reversed the loop direction? Okay, uh, if we had chosen counterclockwise as the loop direction, all of our electric potential differences in, the, in Kirchhoff's loop rule would have been reversed. Because the loop direction now goes from the positive to the negative terminals of the battery, the electric potential difference across the battery is negative. That is because electric potential is going down when we go across the battery in this direction. Because the loop direction through the resistor is opposite the direction of the current direction we, we defined through the resistor, the electric potential goes up through the resistor, and the electric potential difference across the resistor is positive. Uh, substituting the same variables as before into the equation we have for Kirchhoff's loop rule, we get negative EMF plus current times resistance equals zero. A actually, you know, that works out to give us the exact same equation. EMF equals current times resistance, so the current in the circuit equals the EMF across the battery divided by the resistance of the resistor. Correct, Billy. We get the same result for the current in the circuit regardless of which loop direction we choose. If we had chosen an incorrect direction for current, the current ends up being negative, which then tells you that, that you chose the incorrect current direction. Now let's add a resistor to the circuit and talk about Kirchhoff's junction rule, which is the result of conservation of charge in the circuit. The rule is that the sum of the currents entering a junction must equal the sum of the currents leaving a junction, which again is conservation of charge. Mr. P? Yes, Bobby? What is a junction? Yeah, sorry, I, I was just getting to that. Junctions are locations in circuits where at least three circuit paths meet. That means in our circuit we have two junctions, which I have labeled A and B. Therefore, the current going into both of those junctions equals the current coming out of those junctions. Again, this comes from conservation of charge. Every charge that enters a junction must come out of that junction. Okay, we need to define current directions. Bobby. Could you please determine the directions of the currents in these three circuit elements, the battery, resistor one, and resistor two? We, we do this the same way we did before. We place a positive test charge in the circuit and see which direction the law of charges would cause an electric force on the charge. This means current will go to the right through the top wire, to the left through the bottom wire, down through both resistors, and up through the battery. That is correct, Bobby. Let's label the currents as current one through resistor one, current two through resistor two, and current T through the battery because it is the current through the terminals of the battery. That means Kirchhoff's junction rule equations for the circuit are, for junction A, the current going into junction A equals the currents coming out of junction A. That means the terminal current equals current one plus current two. Bo, please do the same for junction B. Currents into junction B equals currents out of junction B, so current 1 plus current 2 equals terminal current. That's the same equation you just got for junction A. Yes, those two junction equations end up being the same. Okay, now I know it may, may not seem obvious in this simple circuit, however I have to ask just to make sure we understand. How do we know A and B are junctions 
and the four exterior corners of the circuit are not junctions. It's pretty obvious, uh, isn't it? Right. Right. So I know there are not at least three circuit paths at any of those corner locations. However, I do get this question with more complicated circuits, so I want to clear this up right now. So again, I ask, how do we know A and B are junctions and the four exterior corners of the circuit are not junctions? Well, let's return back to placing a positive test charge on the wire. Notice that, that a charge which approaches point A could go into the wire leading to resistor 1 or into the wire leading to resistor 2. Because junctions are defined as having three circuit paths, any time a charge comes to a fork in the wire, the charge could go through either wire. That, that makes it a junction. That makes sense. So that means when a charge enters a corner, there is no other path for the charge to take, so it continues along the same wire. Therefore, none of the corners are junctions. Very well said. Now, I, I do think we need to identify the loops in this second circuit as well. Billy, could you please identify the loops in this circuit? Well, one loop is the same as the circuit before. Yes, let's call that loop A and use the clockwise direction. And, and then there is another loop that contains resistor 1 and resistor 2. Let's call that loop B and also have that be clockwise. There is one more loop. Right, all the way around the outside. So it includes the battery and resistor 2. Let's call that loop C and also have it be clockwise. Great. Now let's determine the Kirchhoff loop equations for all three loops. Billy, you get loop A, Bobby, you get loop B, and Bo, you get... I get loop C. Bo, that is correct. Billy, please go ahead. Isn't loop A exactly the same as what we had in the previous circuit, so the equation should just work out to be the same, right? Very nearly, but actually not quite. Ah, oh, subscripts. So we, we just need to add one subscript to the current and resistance. That's the only difference. Correct, Billy. Bo, let's actually do loop C next. Uh, sure. So... The net voltage around loop C equals the voltage across the battery minus the voltage across resistor 2. Actually, isn't this equation exactly the same, only replacing the 1 subscripts with 2s? Bo, that is also correct. Bobby, loop B, please. The net voltage around loop B equals the negative of the voltage across resistor 1 minus the voltage across resistor 2, or negative current 1 times resistance 1 minus current 2 times resistance 2, the net voltage also equals 0, so current 1 times resistance 1 equals negative current 2 times resistance 2. Wait a second. From the loop equations for A and C, we know EMF equals current 1 times resistance 1, and EMF also equals current 2 times resistance 2, so current 1 times resistance 1 equals current 2 times resistance 2, but that is not the same as what Bobby just got. It's the electric potential difference across resistor 1 in the loop B equation. The loop and current are going in opposite directions across resistor 1, so the electric potential difference goes up in the direction of the loop. So the voltage for resistor 1 in the loop B equation is positive, not negative. That gives us the same equation as what Billy got from the loop equations for A and C. I thought the electric potential difference across a resistor was always negative because resistors convert electric potential energy to heat and stuff. They do. However, this has to do with the direction of the loop relative to the direction of the current, not if energy is dissipated in the resistor. If the loop and current are in the same direction across the resistor, the electric potential goes down. If the loop and current are in opposite directions, the electric potential across the resistor goes up. Okay. Very nice, y'all. And Bobby, that is a very common mistake to make when doing Kirchhoff's rules problems. Be very careful to pay attention to the directions of the loops and the currents with regards to whether the electric potential difference is positive or negative in the Kirchhoff's loop rule equations. And it does turn out that the equation for loop B was just a combination of the two equations for loops A and C. Therefore, loop B was redundant. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.